Hello guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm in Substance Designer today and I'm going to show you how to procedurally make these rivet holes uh, in your metal panels. I've been looking for a lot of techniques online, trying to find some clean methods of doing this and I think I came up with something that I think is very useful. One, it's procedural, uh, which we all know and love in Substance Designer and secondly, it really keeps your node graph clean, which I'm a big stickler about keeping the node graph clean. So I'm going to show you how this is set up. You just need, you really need to understand a few basic concepts and a few um, parameters that you need to click on and off. And the rest is, is pretty straightforward. So I'm actually going to create, or actually I'm just going to copy this since I've already created it. I'm going to come in this demo package that I've created and we'll start over. And I'm going to paste this in. <clears throat> so this is just to mimic zinc, zinc panels. Right, so we have our more rectilinear shape. Uh, I kept everything in pattern brick. I just controlled the pattern specific here, which actually controls the gaps. So you can see here, controls the gaps. So I wanted a nice, clean, uh, tight gap. So I point that to 0.02, and that's 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 basically it. So the second step is I'm going to pull off here. I'm going to create a blend node. And in the blend, I'm going to change this to subtract. So this, you want to keep your base tile, your panel into the background. Okay. You're going to actually start to, in the foreground, what we're going to do with the subtract blending mode is we're going to cut the holes into the panels. So next step is space bar. I'm going to type in shape. Okay. And I'm going to create a disc, right? Got our disc. And I'm going to pull the scale back, something like that. And you see, if I just plug this in like so, it cuts a hole, right? It cuts a hole in the panels. But we actually need to scatter and, and create the holes along the edges. So I'm going to disconnect that. The next step is I'm going to pull off and I'm going to create a tile sampler. There we go. This, it does this by default. I don't know why it does that. I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to plug this into the pattern input. All right. Still got your squares. So what you need to do is come down to pattern and change this to pattern input. And now we have our pegboard, so to speak, is what I like to call it. I'm going to increase the scale of this a little bit there. And so now if I take this and plug it into the foreground, we have a pegboard. <laughs> Again. That's what I always call it. Um, so now we have our holes being scattered, tiled, and cut it into our into our panels. I want to pull this into the normals and pull this into the height so we can see it and ambient occlusion. Yeah, so we can see it. And as you can see, we have our holes now. So the next step is what you want to do is take this base tile node and I'm gonna control D, I'm gonna make a copy of it, like so. All right, make sure that's there. And then I'm gonna pull off and I'm gonna create an edge detect. So the edge detect are gonna, as in the name, detect the edges around your shape. So we need to detect these edges right now. The reason why we wanna do that is because we wanna pull this into a mask input. So I'm gonna tell this tile sampler, I want you to mask and scatter these holes along these edges. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this a little bit. I'm going to turn down really the roundness. Now there's a little trick here. All right. Right now, the white is in the inside of the panels and the black is along the edge. What we need to do is if I come back to my tile sampler, and actually what I'm going to do before I do that, I'm going to change the amount of holes real quick. All right. So there we have our still our pegboard. I'm going to come down to where the color, the color parameter is. And I'm going to change this from pattern center to pattern bounding box. And then I am going to manipulate the mass threshold. And you see what it's doing? Rascally, with the threshold, we are 
basically reducing the number of holes along the edges. But the, the trick to this is that you just want to invert your, sorry, let me see. Invert, oh wait, I know what I'm doing, okay. So you want to invert that, yes, you want to invert it. All right, bring this up a little bit, and then I'm going to come to edge width, and let's see, no, invert, sorry, this is, let me go back down here, threshold, ah, there we go. So now, a little bit of delay. There we go. So now, if we come here, we have our holes along the edge. So what I was doing there was, it, it don't get frustrated if it doesn't work at first or kind of saying what's going wrong. This, if I do invert this, the concept still says, right? You need to basically scatter these holes along the edge using this technique. So it's a combination of this mass threshold. Um, as you can see here, it's a combination of this mass threshold and then going back to your edge detect, which is this node. I'm going to highlight this so you can see it. And messing with the width. Right. And it really, this really all depends on the size of your tiles. This will all change depending on the size of your tiles. Okay. So we have our holes along the edges, right? Like this. So the next step or the next little trick is I'm going to pull this off into a bevel here. And I'm going to plug that back in. Okay. Now it disappeared, which is fine. I'm going to come back here so I can see it. Okay, there. And then I'm going to mess with this distance. And look at that. We now have our rivet holes in the corners of the panels. Nice and clean, straightforward, procedural, in just a few steps. All right. I'm going to pull this out here. I mean, this is a really nice technique, I think. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to increase the scale of this. Look at that. Right perfect in the panels. And you can do some other crazy stuff. I mean, I think if you... Yeah. I mean, if I change this parameter, I can also keep them... Oops. see yeah I can keep them along the edge here but I'm gonna bring it back but now I have my holes in the corners of the panels all right and I'm gonna take this uh, let's leave it let's reduce the scale a little bit so now what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is that I have my holes being cut into my panels I want to create the area for the bolts, right? I'm going to pull this off into another blend. Okay, pull this off into another blend. And I'll plug this into the normal height. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste, I'm going to paste this down here, and then I'm going to take this. Uh, this is our background blend mode. I'm going to change this to add. And then I'm going to take a copy of this. And I'm going to plug it into the foreground. Now it disappears. So what you need to do is just change the scale. And then if I change my scale, I get my rivet holes or my bolts. So that's basically it, guys. Um, you know, pretty simple, a uh, few concepts. 
uh, just utilizing the tile generator with the tile sampler. And, you know, the tile sampler, you know, obviously gives us more flexibility control, which we utilize with, you know, the edge detect as our masks and a couple of blends and that's it. So uh, thanks again for watching, stopping by. Let me know if you got any other questions and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.